Hello students, in the last episode we learned about the importance of the quality in garment uh, manufacturing and also we learned how the quality can be checked in the raw material such as fabric and accessories like uh, buttons, zippers, buckles etc. Now today we learn about the checking of some of the uh, parts of the garment uh, that uh, that are going to be manufactured in the uh, you know industries and so this is called as a in process inspection and uh, inspecting different parts of garments before sewing is called as in process inspection. It is to inspect or check the quality of component parts as close to manufacturing as possible and thereby identify the source of quality problems as early in the manufacturing process as possible. This type of inspection is designed to uncover deficiencies in workmanship as well as equipment malfunction. In process in inspection can be performed by either quality control inspectors or individual operators themselves after they perform their respective operations. So, what are the advantages of a well run in process inspection we will see and reduction of major surprises from the customers due to bad quality and uh, then decrease in labor cost due to decrease in repair rates. And these advantages are generally derived from the fact that due to in process inspections that is the operators that are workers and supervisors are constantly reminded that the company has a specific quality level to meet just by the very presence of the inspectors in their section on a daily basis. Because each worker will realize that his or her work is subjected to being inspected at any time throughout the day, the quality of work produced by workers will definitely improve. The data obtained can be effectively analyzed and utilized by the production supervisors and plant manager in correcting problems or improving the quality. In garment industry, the process inspection starts from the marker making and finished with the making of the complete garment. The stages that are there in process inspection are one is at the marker making, next fabric spreading, fabric cutting, sorting or bundling and fabric sewing, seam defects, assembly defects, pressing or finishing defects. So, taking the marking inspection into consideration, it is not exaggerating to say that the production costs are dependent upon how well the marker is made. The effective management of garment industry is evident from the market utilization of the fabric. The points to be inspected or the defects that are found in patterns and markings are pattern parts sometimes are missing. So, the correct number of parts for all sizes they are not included by the marker maker. So, this becomes a defective and then uh, uh, mixed parts that is the parts are not correctly labeled in marker. So, a marriage of uh, wrong size uh, parts that happen and so it will be difficult to again look into all that and then correct these things. And then patterns not facing the correct direction uh, in case of napped fabrics means they are uh, generally finished one way and so uh, they have to be the all parts should be cut in the same way. So, uh, that will also become a defect in case if the patterns are not faced in a correct direction. And then uh, patterns not facing the same direction on a one way fabric that is also a defect. Patterns not aligned with respect to grain line of fabric. As a result, garment may not drape or fit very well. And line deflections poor leading to inaccurate cutting. So, when the line is not that good and then there will be a problem uh, in the industries and also and the printed lines and the uh, sometimes the perforations are there which are uh, used in order to uh, transfer the uh, you know marking from the pattern to the fabric. They will use some powders and some other things and if they do not properly made and then there will be problems. And so, those will also uh, be uh, to, to has to be tackled. 
and then inadequate marking that is skimpy marking we can say either the marker did not use outside edge of the pattern or the pattern was moved or swung after partial marking to squeeze the pattern into a smaller space in the interest of fabric economy. Alternatively, the pattern is wound around the edges and should be replaced. And then adequate marking, a combination of uh, our points we just now we uh, said and results in components being sewn together with puckering or plating and so that becomes again a problem when the garment is made. And uh, then another uh, defect is the marker becoming too wide that means uh, garment parts at the edge of the lay are cut with uh, bits missing. So, not enough uh, knife clearance freedom also is a defect because uh, the knife should be uh, taken when the corners are there, when the curves are there and the operator should be able to take it around and so there should be freedom for the operator to operate these uh, knives while cutting. And mismatched check and uh, stripes that is also while making stripes and checks and uh, we require to uh, see that the those things will match then only you will be getting interesting check effects. And notches and drill marks they are sometimes omitted or sometimes indistinct or sometimes misplaced they should also be corrected. And then there are few pattern grading defects again. And generally grading defects are not found in branded garments as the fitness of the garment is affected in this. In industries where quality is not very important this kind of defects are possible and so the one which is made for 34 size may be uh, fitting 32. So, these defects should be corrected. And the grade not conforming to specification measurements. Sometimes the measurements are being given by the party for whom they are made according to their measurements the garment should be in line with, but if it is not so then it becomes a one defect. So, finished product not measuring to specify dimension and component parts are not fitting in relation to notches, openings and seams such as armholes, sleeve heads, neck bands, uh, neck openings and side seams, waist measurement etcetera. So, if they are not properly made then it will be a defective thing. And then distorted grading sometimes, unbalanced patterns which would cause twisted seams, puckering, pleating and a general uneconomical adage base because one will be big and one will be small and so in order to fit them together sometimes they have to little gather or uh, push some more material into that so that uh, it bulges and then uh, problems arise in that. And then coming to uh, the spreading inspection, the factors that have to be checked during this time are the fabric nature that is whether it is a, a polyester material or cotton material or silk material or wool material that should be taken into consideration again whether they are light medium or heavy weights that should be taken and uh, sometimes uh, uh, when they are placed you know there will be a problem uh, if uh, uh, the way a medium fabric is uh, treated is different from the how the thick fabric uh, is treated. So, if it is not done properly then there will be a problem. And then ply alignment that is the greater the variation either width or length alignment the greater the waste in precision cutting because the ends and sides must be trimmed to the narrowest and shortest plies. And then one more defect is ply tension or the slackness. So, tight spreads make it smaller after cutting that means the patterns become smaller when it is too tensioned and then slack spreads you know possess excess length within the stipulated length of the uh, spread and so the pattern pieces will become more bigger. And then another uh, defect is the bowing, it is the distortion of filling yarn from the straight line across the width of the fabric. This would cause unbalanced stresses in the fabric resulting too tight or too slack in the ply that make the components undersized. And there is one more thing that is uh, the splicing that is placing uh, one bundle after the other how we can place it and all that also there are possibility of getting defects in this place also. And then grain line, grain lines uh, sometimes the patterns are not placed properly 
as per the grain line of the fabric and then the drape of the final garment will be affected. And shade variation, sometimes when uh, two fabrics are put up, there may be kind of uh, shade variation present and if it is within the tolerance then it is okay, otherwise maybe some parts of the garments, one part of the garment will be lighter than the other part and then the, fab the problems arise again at this point. And then sometimes selvage alignment is not done properly and uh, when it is not one over the other, when few layers of the fabric are spread on the table, when one selvage, if the other selvage is not again uh, exactly on the top, then if it is moved this side or that side, then there will be a problem, the patterns are not cut properly in this. And then fabric width, while actually inspecting the raw material, one has to see fabric width whether it is being correctly there or not, whether there is a lot of variations uh, between the intervals of 1 meter or 2 meters, because the garment cannot be completed in 1 meter. And so, if the width is less, then some of the parts of the garment will be affected, they will cut into smaller uh, widths or you know vice versa, it may be bigger or smaller. And then we have the problems with checks, it have, they have to be spread properly and then there is one more thing that is the static electricity. Fabrics like uh, polyester and all or synthetic materials will uh, possess this uh, static electricity. That means, uh, by rubbing the fabric, you know, electricity is being produced on the fab surface of the fabric. And if it is a very good one, that is, it has a very good absorbency, then it will be able to dissipate this uh, electricity. But polyester, where the absorbency is very less and it cannot dissipate that one, and so it becomes static on the surface and it will create problems during the spreading and also during cutting. And then we are talking about the splicing. So, what is splicing? Splicing is a process of cutting fabric across its width and overlapping layers in between the two ends of a lay. Splicing of a lay is required sometimes to avoid faults found in fabric into the garment components. After splicing, cut end is pulled back to overlap splice as far back as the next splicing mark. Overlapping length depends on splicing mark to cover complete garment components. Splicing process is also used when one fabric roll ends in the middle of the marker and end bit length is enough to cover at least one complete garment component. Spreading of next roll starts from the splice mark. And then coming to again some of the spreading defects. So, uneven spreading is one thing that is uh, front edge of lay is not even resulting in front or back edge of marker not catching all ply and the narrow material may be there and the bolts or rolls of material too narrow to cover marker width and sometimes missed sectional breaks. This is sectional marker breaks too long or too short and so parts in lay will be short of material and the material will get wasted. And improper tension that is cloth spread too tight or too loose causing parts not to fit in sewing or distorting dimensions of garments. Then mismatching plates that material spread too loose or too tight causing plate lines to run diagonally or bow occurs. And misdirected napping sometimes uh, air pockets are not removed here and napped material uh, reversed in spreading. So, that will be another defect. And then improper matching of face material. It is not spread face down, face up or face to face as it is required when it is being cut. Insufficient plies that is to cover the quantity of garment, the plies are not there and so there will be a problem again in this. Then cutting inspection, this is also important one because the patterns have to be uh, cut as per the precision and then only uh, it is uh, ensured that the garment is going to fit properly. The factors or the defects which must be checked are edges of the fabrics fray or it is fuzzy or ragged or serrated, ply to ply fusion whether it is properly made and uh, the pattern precision, the notches and drillers cutting equipment precision and some of these things have to be checked uh, before cutting. And then what are the defects that are found during the cutting are? So, cutting quality 
is a prerequisite for quality in a finished product. In addition, cut work quality affects the ease and cost with which construction is accomplished. And Dunlap lists some of the defects that may arise in cutting. One is the frayed edges. That means fabrics not very firm fray after cutting making the pieces smaller. The amount of fraying depends on fabric finish and construction, improper cutting tools or blunt knives also. Fuzzy ragged or uh, serrated edges may come due to faulty knives edges and such as burrs, chips or dullness. And then ply to ply fusion that is single ply whose cut yarn ends or fused to form a hard brittle rim on the cut edge. Then single edge fusion it consists of a single ply whose cut ends are fused to form a brittle rim on the edge which is undesirable if it impedes sewing manipulation. Then pattern precision that is the pattern should be properly made and uh, it uh, cut and uh, in a proper way uh, and the exact markings otherwise there will be a problem and especially uh, in the case of uh, checkered materials and other things. Then notches again this may be these notches which are cut in order to match the different parts of the garment say for example uh, the sleeve is attached to the body and the armhole. So, it will have the notches. So, the notches have to be uh, matched at certain points so that it comes it exactly fits into the uh, armhole. Like so, they have to be uh, seen whether some sometimes they are misplaced, sometimes they are cut too deep and even after making the seam it will be seen onto the right side of the garment. So, it may be too shallow or uh, it may be sometimes omitted. So, notch size should not be too large. Then drilling you know drill marks are sometimes misplaced and uh, not perpendicular or sometimes omitted or uh, the on the wrong side uh, drill is used. The drill holes should be in optimum size and no fusion problems along the flies should occur. And some other uh, defects that are found during cutting are that is marker or perforated, they are not stapled or stenciled on lay to catch both edges causing parts to miss in cutting. Too tight there may be uh, too loose or distorting dimensions of the garment and the perforated stencils they are not powdered or inked sufficiently to show uh, distinct lines or notches and punch marks. And then misplaced piece rate tickets or bundle numbers whether they are attached to or marked on or wrong bundles causing mixed sizes or land shades. And opening of the some of the slits in the garment uh, seams that is uh, cut under above to the side or at incorrect angle. So, not cut through entire bundle or sometimes they are omitted. And improper cutting that is not following the marker lines resulting in distorted parts. Letting the knife lean uh, it causes top and bottom ply to be of different sizes. Then coming to oil spots, the equipment improperly oiled or cleaned, you know they keep oozing out the oil and if it falls on the material then it will be again a problem in order to remove the strain. And then one more defect is improper knife sharpening. So, it may cause ragged, frayed or fused edges on bundles. Knife or uh, scissor cut that means uh, sometimes pieces are damaged by overrun in cutting previous piece. Then coming to the sorting or bundling inspection, it is necessary to check the numbering, the sorting and bundling whether they are done accurately or not. And uh, the defects that are found in this are and sometimes they are not stacked in uh, numerical order that is bundle numbers are not in order on uh, the rack or the box and so it is difficult to pick up and uh, give it to the operators. And uh, matching linings that is wrong size or uh, the wrong material that is being given and then so some of these uh, bundling uh, defects are found and uh, so 
the material handling will become too much in the industry if they are not placed properly and somebody has to pick up and somebody will take some time to check where they are and all and uh, the finally they have to match and bring it together and so it takes some time and so these uh, slackness in this uh, uh, the use of the labor should be avoided in the industries and then coming to the sewing inspection so we can say that this is the largest and important section in a garment industry sewing inspection involves the inspection of work from each operator with a quality standard established to avoid poor workmanship in the industry the provision should be made to allow the operator to reinspect and repair the bundles if they fall out of the quality norms however each operator should be educated to know and understand the quality norms set by the industry so that he tries to work under the purview of quality avoiding rework it is desirable to prepare uh, a manufacturing process chart for each garment they make in the industry so that the areas where thorough checking is required can be detected the defects found during inspection are grouped as sewing defects or seaming defects or sometimes assembly defects and sometimes pressing or finishing defects so taking the sewing defects into consideration and we have lot of uh, defects in this the first one may be important one is the needle damage as evidenced by holes picked threads ruptured threads or other damage to the fabric caused by wrong size or type of needle blunt needle needle heat or machine feeding difficulty so with all kind of these needles stitches will not come out very well and there will be a problem with this and uh, the another one is the feed damage that is particularly on thicker or sheer fabrics or when machining over transverse uh, seams from incorrect type of teeth that is excessive pressure by foot improper alignment of feed and foot damaged throat plate excessive machine speed and all with all these things that the defects will again will appear in the materials and then skipped stitches from the hook irregularly failing to pick up the loop of thread from a needle's eye owing to a number of causes and thread breaks arising from too thick a thread for the needle a thin a thread a needle and uh, operator working unrhythmically or too tight tensions this all will be causing the threads to break and then there are broken stitches arising from wrong stitch type too tight tensions a badly formed joint in the seam where the second line of stitch runs over the first and cracks it sharp feeds and uh, also too great a pressure and seam grin it arises from too loose a tension or too large a stitch or the use of a wrong stitch type and seam pucker and this is because of incorrect handling by the operator misaligned notches or tight thread tensions so pleated seams that is an extreme form of uh, material being too much and it should be where the operator fails to ease in uh, fullness evenly so when they are connecting these two, two parts of the garment and should be teased, should be eased properly and stitched so that it fits in but sometimes operators miss this and so this becomes a defect again then wrong stitch density that means that uh, uh, the operators sometimes uh, uh, they use uh, i mean too many stitches per inch and thus you know uh, the the it give rise to jamming and rupture of the fabric and if too less number of uh, stitches per inch are used and uh, it may uh, cause weak seams so that will be a defect again and then sometimes uneven stitch density so operators cause machine to snatch and does not allow machine to control the fabric and so the density will be too high at one point and the density will be too less in another point and that causes again uh, the defect and the staggered stitch uh, that is uh, it is formed from faulty feed motion or incorrect needle or and other uh, machine parts also and so if they are not uh, correctly placed then there may be uh, there may result in this kind of uh, defects and improperly formed stitches they are caused by 
bad tension, incorrectly adjusted uh, uh, timing, ill fitting machine components and sometimes may be oil spots or stains that are present. Then coming to the seeming defects, incorrect or uneven width of inlay arising from bad handling by operator incorrectly set guide, incorrectly adjusted folder. In extreme cases, the seams burst open, raw edges, show slippages of weave threads that occur or notches are exposed. So, irregular or incorrect shape of sewing line and that is sometimes called runoffs in top stitching arising from lack of or badly set guide, not following a mark sometimes or incorrect handling. Insecure back stitching because of a subsequent rows do not cover the first row of stitching. So, twisted seams that lead to irregular puckering or the garment parts not hanging correctly when worn and uh, this is caused by improper alignment of fabric parts, mismatched notches and allowing one ply to creep against the other. Then we have the mismatched checks or stripes that will be a defect again and mismatched seam where transverse seams do not match that is inside leg seams at the fork of trousers they do not match and then there will be a problem again. And extraneous parts caught in the seam an unrelated piece showing through the seam. So, they have to be removed and that is why most of the times uh, they cut the threads and all they remove it otherwise they will be picked up during the seaming. Uh, reverse garment parts that is where the part is sewn with face side opposite from specification. Perhaps uh, when the part cut for one side of the garment is sewn in the other or when the whole garment inside out. And then blind stitching showing on the face side or not securely caught on inside arising from improperly adjusted binder. Then a wrong type of uh, seam or stitch type that is used and wrong shade of the thread used that will also become a defect. So far, we have learned how the in process uh, inspection takes place in the industry and uh, uh, you know how it starts you know from the maybe from the marker making and from the patterns till the uh, sewing uh, inspection. And then unless the patterns are made accurately and as per the specifications and then uh, the marker will not be good. So, if the marker is not made properly that means there will be a wastage of material and that uh, will be added to the uh, you know manufacturing costs and uh, once the uh, fabric is marked then it should be cut properly and uh, to the precision so that you know the garment parts which come out of this cutting they are accurate in size and so that uh, when they are stitched together uh, the garment parts may be by following the uh, say uh, modular uh, or otherwise continuous uh, systems and then uh, these parts are being uh, properly stitched and while stitching and how the seams how they are made and the, stitch, the stitches how they are uh, uh, actually uh, it should be inspected and how the, uh, the seams are to be inspected and all these things are very very important to make a final garment with a very good quality.